Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to over a product review of the J. Moria Grenada era helmet, 1983 uh, M1 helmet. And I'm just going over what's, what I like about it and you know why it's a good purchase and all that. Anyway, I got the helmet. The shells uh, originally made in the 68-69. It's a parish helmet shell. So the, the difference between this and the War Tour show is just the domes are uh, about a half inch lower than the original domes. It's hard to tell from here. But, uh, you know, since I don't know the helmet with me right now, but the shells were uh, about like a half inch shorter than the actual domes were from the Second World War. And Korea, I think they made them about a quarter inch shorter, but I can't remember entirely. Anyway, uh, most of the parts on this helmet are original surplus besides the sweatband, which I got from a reproduction uh, M1 liner, which I can tell later. But uh, these helmets are a two part helmet system. Obviously, the outer shell is a metal shell. One way to tell that you know, it's a real helmet that uh, it's not a reproduction, it's just not magnetic, and they have a heat stamp on them. So this one dates back to uh, you know mid sixties from Parish. Or late sixties actually from Parish. The 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 frickin' um give me a sec. The neck band is pretty much more like a V Namara style, which you could pull you know, pull off. Just you know, I don't wanna take it off but just do that and it'll come off. War II uh, styles, yeah, I actually use both hands to push it and take it off. The liners actually were different after like the, at like, I don't know, 1970 or during some time during Vietnam, they changed the actual liners consistently. Really. The insides are completely different. They changed the suspension. They gave you a neck, three point neck band, which replaced the neck band for Second World War. That was just a little strip right here. And then you can, you can, uh, you can adjust the, the suspension because uh, the War Two ones had a little like string they could uh, untie and tie back up and make it you know tighter. These had uh, you, you have ways to you know just pull these tabs to make it either looser or tighter to fit your helmet. And then the, obviously the sweatbands uh, War Two reproduction, but the sweatband pretty much remained the same throughout. Uh, besides the colors, the functionality of the sweatbands remained the same. And the liners were uh, made by different companies and different uh, fibers. The last special liners were actually, uh, I believe, were fiberglass. And uh, actually, I have a liner right here, so I'm going to take, take it off. Which is what the liners look like. This is from 84. Still like a fine sample of a liner. Still looks like brand new. This is a band from, a, from 88, probably past it, but it's pretty much uh, what it look like. They're both made by CMP, Consolidated uh, Molded Products, which pretty much made the last ever uh, helmet M1 liners. And uh, maybe also, they may be the same company, but this one I have on my current helmet, it's actually, a, since my helmet's a lower dome, this line is also somehow a lower dome and it fits it nicely. This one actually will like stick out of the helmet about like a, like a quarter inch or half an inch, for some reason since it's, it's like a high dome kind of liner. But this one fits my word to reproduction helmet liner decently for, for some reason. But, uh, going on with the helmet review. Yeah, it says, uh, one way you can tell this is from like a Vietnam era helmet, so it's the color is like a pea green helmet, which uh, you can be able to see from the little right here. It's like a pea green. It's not like a dark olive drab. It's kind of the color they used from this the the you know sixties and seventies during Vietnam. They had that color. Obviously, the camel is actually M eighty one camel used, also known as the woodland camel used during. Uh, you know, late of Vietnam, which is you known as the Eater Camel. And later on, obviously, when it's really from it uses the M81 Camel, which the difference between Eater from the Vietnam era and this one is just a, this version of the camouflage has actually uh, is out, has defined outlines, which the Camel from Vietnam was more of a blurry, semi blurry line. But they were made by the same company or the same uh, laboratory, you known Laptop one is E D R L, which is uh, I can't remember the actual acronym for that. But yeah, the same laboratory made the camos. 
even the muscle pattern is actually made from the same laboratory. But the sound is meant to look like, or the punch look like the how it was used during Grenada, even those shells from uh, Vietnam. But the M1 helmets were used. The first batch of helmets had a uh, a seam, which pretty much like it's a welded uh, small metal band that went around the helmet. And the first helmets had the seams welded in the front. Which is the front helmet seam, and the first helmet had a, a fixed bell or well, you know, bells, which is our uh, those things. These actually swivel, so they're obviously it's not war two at all. But the fixed bells were pretty much welded on, they're like sort of straight down. After a while, they kind of realized the GIs kept dropping them, they kept bending, so they start, they invented the swivel bell in the 43 44. So you may see a fixed a front seam helmet with silver bills, but that's okay. As long as you know the heat stamp so that you built us from like the early war. They made a fixed bell helmets and front seam helmets. Well most more importantly well, or most recently they made front seam helmets from uh forty one to about late mid to late nineteen forty three. Afterwards they started making helmets with silver bills and the band for the helmet which is you know, I was talking about earlier the band which wraps around the helmet. They started with them in the back, and that's what's known as a weirder seam, which was made pretty much uh, from 44 until the last batch, which was made in the 70s. The helmets in the 60s and beyond were made with a lower dome, so these domes were about a half inch lower than the previous uh, helmets made during the World War in Korea, so it's a lower profile. For instance, uh, this, this is known as a Parish helmet, it's made by that Parish company. From, uh, Subdury the Dana Corporation. For instance, like the same art helmet used on the former jacket, not the same like helmet because the, the dome is you know lower. The army thought a lower dome will help with a consumer or something. But you know, having a less. Also, the the liners were uh, made lower on the the suspension liners were made lower, so the helmet set higher on your head. So these liners or uh, war two liners would probably be more like deeper in into the, in well the suspension would have been deeper into a liner, but then decided to make them uh, how they are in this one. So they made the liners uh, closer to the rim, so it's way deeper into the helmet, so the helmet doesn't sit like way deep in down your head. So yeah, but this is my uh, quick review of the overview of this uh, helmet I got from Jay Murray. Uh, Inc. 1944, and then uh, obviously the Vietnam War helmets, and until like the punch, until like punch 70s or so. Uh, these never got taken off, but pretty much you could just pull this tab off and take off the the shin strap. Later on, they made them like a little cup that can fit it up your finger shin. Was pretty much meant to be like how they kind of use them in Grenada and Lebanon in '83, the, 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 the year of 1983. But, uh, yeah, it's the original helmet. has a heat stamp of uh, 24901 or 249, 2491. It's hard to tell because the third number is like, covered by paint on the bottom. So, well, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, you can tell us, uh, well, I was able to tell us our original uh, helmet made in the late 60s. Did still add some reachers. But it's a great buy if you want to go to a gill on your own. Go to uh, Jimmer Inc. Yeah, the uh, yeah, the the website or oh, this is their name. That was just be back here somewhere. Oh, it is. The website you remember in nineteen forty four dot com. There's a phone, email. If you get your helmet, this helmet cost me like eighty five bucks for shipping. They also have a uh, World Two Paratrooper helmets and uh, World Two uh, regular infantry helmets. And then a lot of, they have a lot of parts. And then if you wanna, the, there's another uh, store. Run by a YouTuber known as Mike B. That's Mike uh, Mike's Melcheria, but she on YouTube he talks about uh, pretty much all kinds of helmets and military stuff. And there's also uh, if you want to learn about more specifically learn about U.S. helmets, uh, go to YouTuber John Boy Zero Nine, and he talks about pretty much uh, all of America's helmets from the the 1917 uh, on well, our 1917 helmet, which is pretty much the Brody helmet we got from the British. Until pretty much this version of helmet, the last versions of them once ever made. But 
this has been me. Hopefully I've been understandable and been able to hopefully enjoy some of the content I've been showing you. This is my first video in a while, so I guess we want to give a like and subscribe. You know, I'd be much appreciative, but just thought, uh, you know, I love this kind of stuff. I love history, so I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a, this is a little review and just a little, a little history lesson on the helmets. Until next time, enjoy your day.